Barbarian 2022 Movie Review. Hey, what's up guys? It's Josh here. Today I want to do a little horror movie review on a movie called Barbarian from 2022. Now, I've started to watch a YouTube video where a YouTuber just completely hyped this movie and said, don't watch any of the trailers, don't even watch my review, just go see it. So I was like, ah, oh, you know, I'm a big fan of not watching trailers as it is. And when you say something like that, I just had to go see it. So there is a monster in this movie and there is kind of an explanation to why things are going on. I am not going to talk about those two things, but I will probably lead a little Little bit into the setup about what is going on which could be considered mild spoilers but the absolute juicy stuff I am not talking about so the pros of this movie is that it had a very unique feel and it unravels in a very unique way um, it's not a very linear style story it has multiple stories kind of leading into one multiple different time periods so when you first get into the story it seems like it's a very linear story you're gonna follow these this person or persons till the end or almost the end it had a nice bit of twists and turns throughout I felt like the acting here was really good and nobody's acting stood out as bad. Everything was good in this department. Based on everything you showed me and all the characters that I saw, I felt like it was a pretty good ending. There wasn't really one character that I wanted to die that didn't die and there wasn't really one character that I wanted to get away that didn't go away. So I felt like the ending of this movie was very, very satisfactory. I liked it. Also too, mainly in the beginning, uh, this movie has a very unique vibe and almost music. Now again, it was mainly in the beginning but it just has a very different feel. It almost feels like you're watching something next level, something that's actually supposed to be scary and something you haven't seen. So I did appreciate the music, especially in the beginning. And then one of the last pros of this one is that it challenges a lot of social norms. Now, if you're making an R-rated movie, let people say R-rated things. Don't, don't like put this PC veil even over the most R-rated graphic things. So I do feel like they said words in this movie that they're normally not allowed to say, which I appreciate. Hopefully we can get back to just everybody saying everything as long as it's an R-rated movie and it has some taste. Another challenge to the social norm that I appreciated was in the beginning, you have a guy and a girl. Several times the girl's just mentioning, yeah, you know, life is hard, but if you're a female, it's just so much more worse. And you know, most of the time in movies, that's where they'll leave it. Like, yeah, everything's harder for the woman, everything's better for the man, period, you know? But I kind of liked that after she said that, the guy would say a challenging point, like, hey, you know what I mean? At least for me, like, I'm not like that, or just another opinion. So it's not just a one-sided thing, it's, I have a problem with this, and then here's another thought. And instead of just arguing or finding who's right, it's, it was just kind of like a fair back and forth. Whereas I, before I felt like movies were a little bit one-sided about men are always either really dumb or they're evil in power. And the woman is just like this hardcore warrior, the best person and she's getting held down. And I just don't think in every situation in life that's the reality of things. So I like that they kind of showed you both sides to this. Okay guys, let's jump into the cons that I have with this movie. The cons that I had, again, I'm not gonna be getting into specifics of this, but the monster was very very, very underwhelming here. There was points that it was actually borderline laughable. And I watched this one in theaters, so like I wasn't gonna laugh in theaters. I might've laughed if I was by myself, but there was also another female in the theater who also kind of smirked and busted out laughing in a different part. So there was parts of this that I wasn't the biggest fan of the monster. I didn't think it was the most scary. I almost thought at a few points it was laughable. Not the whole time, it is very scary, but I think there were some laughable points. Another con that I have with this movie, and I'm not gonna get into too many details, but it's way too similar to Black Phone. You know, it's almost like somebody saw that somebody was writing a script called Black Phone, saw what it was about, and then made this movie to kind of counter it, to have like a different movie with a similar kind of tone. I'm not gonna be getting into the specifics about why it is very similar to Black Phone, but once you figure out the whole movie, it has some very very, very close similarities to it. I don't really want to see this evil, gross stuff go on, but something that I didn't like in Black Phone was they didn't show any gruesome or any bad things happening. Besides Ethan Hawke just being intimidating, I mean, there was a whole point of, I didn't want to discuss it, but all sorts of nasty, gross things that were going to happen to these boys that you never even saw, never even got a hint of what was going to happen. And the same with this movie, there's so much backstory and there's even a flashback to like 20 or 30 years ago or something where you see barely anything of anybody. So you kind of understand what's going on in this house. Besides the characters that you're introduced to, it's almost like there is no backstory, there's no lure, there's no, there's no nothing. You just know generally this happened here, 
I didn't really want to see the gross things happening, but all you kind of see is the aftermath, you know? It's almost like if you're watching a Freddy and a Jason movie and all you see is the aftermath of the kills. It's like, I don't really want to see somebody dying, but if I'm watching an R-rated movie, like I don't really want to fill all the pieces in myself. Like I want to have an idea of what's going on here and they just don't really dive deep into anything. There's this whole backstory that's about 30 years before that they get into in like the middle or the end of the movie. And this scene should have been way, way longer. I have no idea why it was so short. It kind of shows who used to own the house back then, how things were back then. And I just wanted more concrete information about what was happening to specific people specific times and it's all just kind of really vague and up in the air and left for you to fill the pieces in which I kind of like sometimes but not here so if I were to rate this movie guys I'd probably rate it between a 7 to a 7.5 it really didn't hit the hype for me I was actually hoping that there would be a more intense monster down the line and there just never was so I would say buy try or pass I saw a try and to be honest, there was a movie called Malignant that came out last year that I just liked way, way more than this. I'd recommend that you check it out. Anyways, guys, we're on the road to 50,000 subscribers and I couldn't do it without any of you guys' help. You guys are the best. Having a great day out here. Hopefully having a great day at home. See you all in the next video. Peace. Yeah.